Welcome back to CF Podcast, guys. Kai over here with Jason. What's up, dudes? And we've got Three Gun Kenzie as our guest today. Hello. <laughs> How's it going, Kenzie? It's awesome. It's, it's going good. Life. Good. What do you got to say? Living the dream? <clears throat> is this your dream? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's good. We're <laughs> very happy to have you here. Guys, Kenzie is a three gun shooter, if you can't tell, with her name, Three Gun Kenzie. She doesn't just own three guns. She's a, she's a three gun shooter, and actually nationally recognized a shooter. And she'll tell about herself and her shooting career uh, uh, in a minute here. Uh, what was that? Top twenty last year? Yeah, our, our final match of the year was fall brawl, and I placed eighteenth in open and one high lady overall. But that was the highest I've ever shot for the year, and I think switching to open made that. Made that happen, so gotcha. I'm excited. Now that sounds amazing, and I know nothing about Compton shooting. What about you, Jason? No, man, I just I watch it. I mean, I've got friends yeah. who do it, but that's about yeah, it. but all these rules that they have, right? Yeah, like I, I know, for instance, the 180 rule, right? That's the biggest thing for me. Like, what, what does that even mean? A 180 degrees. So if you're actually shooting a stage or anything, and you take your muzzle past the point of like a 180 degree. Oh, for safety it. reasons. Correct. Right? I yeah. see, I see. Okay, yeah. cool. But in three gun, we actually have like 270 degree bays. It's kind of mm -hmm. cool. You'd enjoy some of the stages that they put on because we put on some cool stuff. Got you. Yeah. I mean, listen, there is a, a ton of questions I have. Sure. Because uh, I don't know anything about this and I'm pretty sure our audience who's watching this right now, a lot of them don't know either and you are the competition shooter here. Me and Jason were more into like combat stuff, yeah. self-defense stuff. And uh, so there's a lot of things that I want to learn here from you and also our audience. So awesome. I'm going to try to think of some of the questions me and Jason will, that audi our audience will be curious about. So, but in a nutshell, we want to know about, like, how do you get into this comp competition? Shooting? Like, how did you get into it? What made you? How did you get into shooting? Just freaking run us through about your life. A nutshell or the long version? <laughs> no. Hey, I got time. I got okay, my okay. Uh, drink over here, so Fair go enough. for it. Yeah. Uh, so I, I feel like it was almost like an accidental thing, but um, 2014, I was working at Talon Range in Tallahassee. I went to college there and uh, was doing their marketing and stuff, but they had a lot of matches that they put on. And so I signed up for what's called a GSSF match. Uh, that's the Glock Shooting Sports Foundation. That's probably one of the easiest sports to get into because all you need is a Glock to go compete and it's three stages it's small there's no movement you don't even need a holster so um, that's a very easy sport to get into so I started there Wh when was that at uh, 2014. 2014 so 2024 mm -hmm. when we're recording this podcast actually my 10 year anniversary of shooting so it's like a big milestone for me wow yeah well, congrats thanks yeah. You're doing really good <laughs> thanks. um so from there I I made my pistol team um in college I was in the end of my grad school career so I actually got to shoot on the pistol team uh, which means we shoot the steel challenge, um, which is like steel plates uh, for time, for score and stuff. That migrated into USPSA. So when you kind of move from GSSF and steel challenge, you're going into a shooting sport that requires holster, mag pouches, movement now. And so um, USPSA is where you really kind of hone your skills with whatever duty gun maybe or a carry gun. Um, so I, I shot, gosh, a Glock for so many years, you know, getting started. And then 2017 was when the magic happened. So Talon Range put on a three-gun competition. Uh, they only had one long-range stage, thank goodness, because it was 400-yard range. Uh, I shot iron sights on a, on a rifle because I didn't have a scope. 400 yards? Yeah, I did not mm, hit the target. Okay. Let's be real. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> but it yeah. got me addicted to three guns. So I shot the Glock, shot um, a, basically a stock Stoger M3000 shotgun, hand loaded. And I think the capacity with the plug was like five rounds. Okay. So it's not yeah. ideal yeah. for three gun. But I don't remember it being like painful. I don't remember like wishing I had better gear or whatever, right? Like it was so fun that that was a pivotal point there. Um, then I went really deep into cowboy action shooting for two years. What is that? <laughs> Okay, so you have to shoot uh, different firearms from like a time period where you're shooting revolvers. You have two revolvers, uh, you have a lever action rifle, and then there's different shotguns. There's people that shoot pump actions, which we all learned that I can't do. Um, I shot a, <laughs> I shot a break action shotgun where you're loading two rounds yeah. at a time, closing the action, shooting two, and reloading that on yeah. the clock. So cowboy action is a blast. Um, you have to wear like the cowboy hat and the western boots and. Um, it was fun. So I did that for two years. I, I actually won a belt buckle <laughs> at wow, a match. Okay. <laughs> that was fun. So do, are you funding it yourself at that point? Yeah. So what's uh, what a lot of people do is they volunteer their time to be a range officer. And so like going back to the Glock matches for seven years, I worked as a range officer for the match on like Saturday, Sunday, and the range officers all shot together on Friday. 
everything same thing with USPSA. When there was a major match involved, the ROs would shoot the day or two before the match and then range off serve for the weekend. They would pay your match fees. They would pay your hotel fees, your food, like per diem. And I did that probably, I, I don't know the time period, but like five or six years all over the country. And that was the only way I could afford it because I was in my 20s, yeah. right? And I tell people like that, it's you have to volunteer your time but you get free match and some travel stuff, right? So that's the only way I was able to make mm. it in my 20s. Now, uh, my focus and my career has changed so much where I don't have the time to RO as much. So, you know, I pay to shoot the match and then I'm off doing media next, you know? Gotcha. Um, what about ammo? You, would you bring your own ammo too at that time? Or yeah, I mean, so I've never gotten into reloading ammunition. Like, uh -huh. that's just not my skill. Um, so yeah, the ammo was probably the most expensive part. And when I got started, it was the 22LR crisis. And so we could only buy one box at a time, yeah. which is what forced me to go uh, choose center fire to, to compete in. So, yeah, ammo prices have gone up. I'm super blessed now. I shoot for Super Bell Ammunition, so they sponsor me. I'm so grateful because that is a huge part of it. Um, I haven't even finished the shooting story either. What's funny is all of this is digressed into, like, I'm a competitive person that has a trigger. What? You are? Yeah, just a little. Wait, Jason. Is, is <laughs> Jason's like, I'm so uh, dumb. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, we can concur. For I sure. mean, you are a competitive, <laughs> yeah. competi competitive, competitive shooter. shooter. Yeah, so yeah. you got to be competitive. You got to be, yeah. 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 So I went um, and I shot uh, just a local, but I got into a little bit of an NRL, NRL 22, which was just a long bolt gun, bolt action 22. So much fun. Um, and then last year, I actually competed as an amateur for a precision rifle series. So I borrowed mm. a gun. I paid for components. My friend loaded the ammo for his gun. Um, so Ryan Hay and I, he was like my pro, and we shot what's called the gap grind together. I don't know if you saw Colin Noir's yeah, he video. Yeah, he did a video. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I personally didn't. Okay. <coughs> okay, so basically I dedicated myself to learn long range. So all last year we did like five major matches. You know, I dry fired at home, um, and then I did this finale of competing with a teammate, pro for NAM. So it was, it was a blast. So that, and then I'm now deep into AK matches, like shooting AK Masters, AK Winter Motherland, going to Clash Bash, like mm. okay. fun. So there's there's not a shooting sport that I wouldn't do, and I'm trying to do them all. That's oh, I mean, that is, <laughs> sounds amazing. But what, okay, why did you want to get into competitive shoot? Okay, how did you get into like shooting? like? Yeah. Guns. How did yeah. that happen? Um, so I grew up with, I'm blessed. My family uh, always had firearms, always had firearms in the sit in the house. Where are you from? Pensacola, Florida, lower uh, Alabama. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I love that question. Alabama <laughs> extended. Yeah. <laughs> 100%. Sure. Okay. So I remember <clears throat> times with my grandpa, um, we would set up the Coke cans mm. with little revolvers and shoot off of a, a tree. like 22 girl. <laughs> That is awesome. Out of 22, man. Shout That's out to so Grandpa. Good. Yes. <laughs> um, and so then we also grew up duck hunting. So I was a big bird hunter. Um, I still have my first like little short Winchester 20 gauge shotgun. I even like sharpied my initials on it. Like this was my gun, right? Um, so I, yeah, I grew up duck hunting and just grew up with my dad shooting, my grandpa shooting. Um, and then when I when I went to college, like I, I just Googled one day. This I, I don't remember why to find the pistol club that I became a part of and then became on like made the team. And then once you shoot something, it's not like I went out seeking this. It's like once you shoot it, you're like, oh, I'm addicted. So this is my this is my thing so now. So shooting sport chose you. It did. I'm telling you, it just fell in my lap. That's so good. <laughs> it was accidental. Yeah. yeah, I did one, which we'll get into, IDPA shooting. Just one oh, yeah. by chance. I was just there. They're like, hey, you should do it. I was like, nah, I've never done this before. Come on, do it. Like that. And I did it. Holy crap. Cover it's garments? Addicting. Uh, like, did you have yes, the vest? I did. Yeah. yeah, I had to wear the sky's vest yeah. too. I got the videos, and wow, that was addicting. Yes, that was yes. addicting. And I forgot to mention that I did shoot IDPA two years ago with a PCC, um, and then just last year, I actually finished pretty well. I shot um, IDPA and carry optics with my Nighthawk with my Nighthawk team, um, one high lady overall, and then I was. Ugh, I don't remember if I was second or third carry optics, but I was up there. I was like, okay, so okay. IDPA, I forgot about that. IDPA, I mean, I, I, I know, okay, we'll get to, I know we're jumping around yeah. right now. Yeah. I, I want you to tell your story. And then I want to address what are some of these cl classifications? Like I, what is IDPA, yeah. what is USCCA, and a bunch of other things. So we'll, we'll get there. But yeah. go ahead and continue with your story, how you got into shooting and how you get into com competitive shooting, which you were pretty yeah. much talking about. Yeah, I mean, I was, I was lucky too. When I share my journey is like when I was up and coming and all these shooting sports, I didn't have the gear or any of the guns that I have now. 
Um, I borrowed mag pouches, which were like blade tech coupled, like <laughs> not the best back pouches right. um i didn't have any shotgun caddies so i was like loading out of my pocket like one shell at a time so anyways the, the shooting sports world i don't know if you've um you know you borrowed somebody's vest right yeah. there is not a competitor out there that would not give you clothing off their back the gear mm. the guns even ammunition um i've had so many firearms go down that at a cowboy match my revolvers wouldn't work and I don't even know, I don't even remember this guy's name. We well, you know alias names. Yeah. So he gives me his two revolvers and at the end of the day, he was like, well, I was hoping you'd bring these back, but I wasn't sure. And it's like, <laughs> oh, wow. you know, we That's, load out these firearms, but. Like, especially oh. it being such a competitive arena, yeah. it's kind of wild. That's when would be like, hey, take right? my gun. Yeah. Whatever, That's yeah. so cool. I mean, yeah. it's really good to hear that the people would actually, mm -hmm. to their fellow competitors, you know, they could just give their stuff so 100%. they can continue. That's 100%. So cool. It happens yeah. all the time. I've used uh -huh. um, PCCs, pistols, I've had shotguns go down, and, like, people just hand you stuff. And there's a couple what's called helping matches, which aren't really, like, a, a nationally, like, match, but where if something goes down on the stage while you're shooting, somebody can run up and hand you a gun, run up and hand you a shotgun, like, just to keep going. And those are yeah. my favorite matches because they're just so fun. That's what's up. That is, that yeah. is really, really Y'all cool. would enjoy those. Mm. I mean, yeah, I, I, I think I would do the same thing. Like, yeah. you know, I just, I love helping people out overall. And if I see somebody struggling, I'd be like, hey, man, here, use mine. I, I feel like I'd, I'd be exactly the same way. Yeah. Um, so competitive shooting, you got into USCCA and, you, no. USPSA. USPSA. Yes. Right? Yep. That's what, I'm yep. sorry, that's the insurance <laughs> company. Yeah. <laughs> right. You're used to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't even have it. I just heard it. Right. Uh, so you got into that stuff and you've been doing that to this day. You're very active. I want to ask you this. Why three gun? Mm -hmm. It is so, so much fun. I don't know how to explain why, but the addiction of having to master three platforms, running and gunning is just absolutely fun. You know, and there are matches, like even shooting with like the Army Marksmanship Unit uh, team, there are matches where there are stages over a minute long. You get to shoot for a freaking minute on one stage, right? Mm -hmm. And then if you go to a USPSA hey, I shot match. Two and a half minutes yesterday. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> <laughs> but like when you go to USPSA, um, say a local match, maybe like five, six stages, you could actually total up all your times and only have shot for one minute. Hmm. You know, you leave three gun, you're like, I got to shoot for like eight minutes, bro. Like I got to shoot all three guns, shoot long range, shoot slugs, you know, bird shot. We have clays that launch in the air. What shooting sport is more addicted when you have all of this going on? Yeah, that's cool. I, I mean, what do you think, Jason? Are you uh, are you more of a pistol guy, rifle guy or a shotgun guy? Well, <clears throat> to be honest with you, shotgun, y'all know my philosophy on that. Breaching and birds, baby. But um, <laughs> I, 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 I go, like we said earlier, toward the more com combat side, uh, tactical side. So, But to be honest with you, like in three-gun and competition, it pushes performance. And I believe that performance should be in all aspects of it, no matter how you look at it. Because look at when we went to Breda's Range Day. Yeah. I was sucking on those break – uh, the little thing break that action the, yeah, and shotguns, oh. but yet put a thirteen oh one in my hand and let those same clays fly, <laughs> yeah. and it's a different story. So, you know, it, it just goes to you know different mindsets and how you you know just articulate yourself in that realm per se. I, me personally, um, just more practice at it, and I think I could actually do something. But you know, it being the first time I've done like a three gun thing, like hey, I yeah. was happy with my performance. Yeah. Granted, I will say this, uh, America, make sure your rifles are zero. <laughs> yeah. um, Equipment I can't, check. yeah, equipment check. I can't, um, you know, stand on that hill any higher than I possibly can. And so. and you had uh, your buddy Trey out there. We had Trey on, and yeah. he's a professional shooter, yeah. master of carry optics. What yeah. happened to his optic? Oh, well, that's because Trey, uh, he likes to switch stuff around a lot, and <laughs> I know that because the group chat is wild. But, um, <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, but he still shot. What he shot, regardless yeah. of a broken optic or he had a loose optic, yeah. it wasn't broken. He didn't have it tightened down. But like this is Which what I'm saying: is professional shooters make mistakes. Like I've done that too. Like you're talking about zero your optic, check your screws. Um, you know all of that stuff is really you important. Know, anybody who's wondering right now what we're talking about, yeah. we shot a video yesterday. <laughs> That's gonna be a classics main channel. Obviously, it's a CF podcast. You guys got to watch that. I don't know what the title is gonna be, but it's gonna be three gun something, right? Mm -hmm. That we all ran this competition course that Kenzie put together at oh, uh, Trey did Trey uh, built it Trey, on his range yeah okay I thought yeah. you kind of set it Helped, up oh, yeah. yeah to yeah at the uh, Trey Barber Barber uh, Training Solutions mm -hmm. uh, shout out to him awesome guy a uh, we did it there mm -hmm. and 
it totally I sucked. I mean, it was just holy crap. Well, but you had you guys you, will watch. You had gun issues, yeah. you know, the things. And uh, but yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. I would say I'm more of a rifle and pistol guy. I mean, yeah, this shotgun. Sure. I'm having. A, I'm having a. I, I've carried them, mm-hmm. but it's just. I've never mastered them. Let's just say not that. a thing for me. I yeah. never really was. Ugh, I don't think yeah. anyone really spends a lot of time on, on shotgun at all. Like across the country, you know, they're not really home defense guns unless you're a bird hunter. Like what are you, you're not going to go, you know, use this every day or take it to the range. Uh, that's the thing about three guns. Actually, my favorite gun in the world is a 12 gauge shotgun. I could shoot shotguns for the rest of my life and be happy. Semi or pump? Oh, semi. Oh, We've crap. learned that. So we shot another video <laughs> with Classic <laughs> about the world's <laughs> fastest shotgun. Yeah. And it is not a pump action, y'all. <laughs> just just uh, don't watch the pump. <laughs> really painful. But. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So anyways. Uh, so, okay. Three guns. So you do three gun because it gives you this um, expertise high. on all three Adrenaline dump. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's pretty good. But. Uh, what other type of competition categories or classes are out there? So IDPA, <laughs> USPCA, or USPSA. We'll USPSA. get you there Whatever. one USP- day. We got you. Just <laughs> Guys, just point to me and I'll I'll say it for you. <laughs> from from the get go, I admit it that I know nothing about competition, so nobody can judge me. So USPKA. Oh, we're okay. Close. I'm messing around right now. We're <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, so there's those are the two that we've all heard of at least, right? Yes. What are some of the other common, commonly known uh, okay. competition classes? So, I mean, you've got yeah, IDPA and USPSA. So, USPSA is definitely going to be your run and gun with pistol or now PCC. There's different divisions in terms of if you wanted to shoot carry optics, meaning a more of a like. Uh, there's a list of of guns that you can shoot in production that's also legal in carry optics. Um, so I don't want to go too far into the weight of divisions, but carry optics, you'd have an optic on it. You know, there's actually a division in USPSA where you can shoot revolver. So if you want to relo- reload a revolver on the clock, it's super I not fun. I have seen Jerry Mikulay yeah. do that <laughs> yeah. extremely fast. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then Mike Pogge or Michael Pogge, he's a really good revolver shooter. But anyway, so USPSA, you've got all of these different uh, divisions and pistols that you can shoot, uh, moving and shooting, and it's accuracy and time. And then IDPA is going to be your more of like... I wouldn't even say defensive shooting, but they are focused on your carry garments, your carry setup. Uh, They have specific like gear stuff. And then same thing, they have division requirements. You can shoot irons, you know, uh, carry optics again is another one. I shot PCC before, but you're having to actually like clear your carry garments and then you got to shoot accurately. If you don't, the, the further out of the A zone or the center of the target that you're shooting, you're adding up penalties. You're adding up plus one, plus two, plus three, whatever, you know. Yeah. So IDPA is really a... And, and then you only have so many rounds. Like IDPA is 10 rounds for carry optics for me. So you don't have a lot of makeup shots to yeah. make or you're going to be doing standing reloads forever. You can only have so many mags. Anyways, so that's kind of the sports there that I look at. But Steel Challenge is where I, I recommend a lot of people get started. Male, female, junior, older person, whatever. Steel Challenge just allows you to uh, go out in, in a shooting box and have fun shooting at five different steel targets for time. You don't have to have you know, a holster or a bunch of gear. If you're shooting just 22s, you know, a lot of people have 22s, like 10, 22s, Ruger's like, it's just so easy to get into and cheap. Right. 22. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And we don't have the Christ anymore. Right. Exactly. Um, Yet. 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 It's an election year. That's true. That's true. So steel challenge. So that's just part of USPSA. So steel challenge and USPSA are under the IPSC, IPSC. Um, umbrella. So it's basically what we were doing, Jason. At Beretta, I mean, they kind of put together, so you just yeah. hit steel, like a bunch yeah. of different steels you just mm-hmm. shoot, right? So there's like, you'd shoot four targets in whatever order you want, and then you have to shoot the stop plate last. That stops oh, your time. Oh, I know what that is. I've, yes. I've done that before. Yep. So there's like one, two on the left, one, two on the right. That's one stage, and then so, the stop plate. Yeah, they, so you fire five rounds. I've done that, dude. Mm-hmm. I've got a video of me. You won't believe it's me shooting it. Like it was under, like it was insane. <laughs> yeah. But I yeah. tried it like 20 times first. And uh, it's just, uh, so two targets on the left, two t- big, you know, chest size plates mm-hmm. and two on the right. And there's this small gong, circle, small circle, See, red That's in the called center. smoke and hope. That's the stage that you smoke shot. Smoke and what? Smoke and hope. Smoke and hope. Okay. Yep. So it was like five shots, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So it was like bang, 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 bang. Mm-hmm. Yep, that's one of the faster stages, but it's trapping you into a speed trap. You know, you're just going to hit as fast as possible on the bigger ones, but you got to really make sure you hit that stop plate. Um, But there still challenges eight actually stages that are the only stages that you shoot in still challenge. So no matter what level of a match you go to or where you go in the country, they only have eight stages that they run. Some matches will run six, some will run the full eight. Just depends on the level. But that's why still challenge. You can go set that stage up, smoke and hope at home, practice it all day. And then when you go to a match, that's the exact stage you're going to shoot. 
That's how oh. these that's how these guys and these kids, man, get so good. That world speed shoot, that's the the stages. Subs say so eight all eight stages, okay, and you're doing three strings per stage, some or whatever, and it's uh sub sixty seconds in total is what like the fastest shooters in the country are doing, and they're all under like eighteen man. years old, you know. Man, I did it at one point six seconds, I thought that was fast. Sixty. Oh yeah, and this is sixty totaled up. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right, well, Obviously, we need yeah. to practice. So we, we definitely do. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I've done a lot of like steel. Like, who doesn't like shooting steel? Yeah, it's just an amazing. You get that instant feedback. It's so good. I've done a lot of combat courses like that. You know, mm-hmm. you just put a bunch of different courses. You just prone shooting, obviously kneeling and just running and taking cover and engaging yeah. certain steels. And move and shoot. I love it. You two should do the tactical games. Have you thought about that? We actually. <sighs> Didn't we talk we about? We talked about that. They even do team matches. You two would be so fun to shoot a team match together, dude. We probably will. You know what, dude? Actually, when I was at uh, Shot Show, I interviewed Under Armour. Mm-hmm. So shout out to uh, Colt from Under Armour if he's watching this awesome guy. <laughs> and uh, we did an interview. Check out Shot Show coverage. Awesome stuff that they have. And they actually sponsor, you know, tactical games. Mm-hmm. They mm-hmm. there are a couple of tactical games athletes there that I interviewed. They invited us. They're like, come do tactical games with us. That'd so I said, dope. I said, I'll do it. Yeah. And it's just pistol so and rifle, guys. You don't have to worry about a shotgun. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Exactly. I think we know, but like the way that they do, like the breaching stuff, yeah. like there, there's a whole apparatus mm-hmm. to it. That's really dope. Yeah, they said, I think, like 75% fit, fitness, 25% yes. shooting. Yeah. Yeah. Like that. But the I'm, I'm just going to say the tactical games, you guys would be best at the, the actual shooting portion because a lot of them don't practice the shooting. They can nail the actual, you know, weightlifting, running, yeah. whatever. But if you can shoot, that's that's how the best athletes are. So I, yeah. hey, you know what? I'd love to. I'd love to try it out. Yeah, you could run your plate carrier and your sling, all all the good stuff. That's why anytime I anytime <laughs> I get an opportunity where I'm going to run and gun, I put my plate carrier yeah. on just extra little thing, just make it harder. Yeah, I like it. Uh, so. so that's the other sports that we really didn't talk about is um, there's like the AK world, right? So there's AK matches all over the country. There's local matches that I'm sure people put on. But you know, if you have, I've seen people run iron sight AKs from like, I don't even know the 1900s, like these old things. I've seen Russian built ones. I've seen people come out to the AK matches wearing plate carriers or dressed up in full war uniform. Like it's hysterical. It's almost like a a fashion thing Mm. and Hawaiian shirts. I mean, it's a vibe, right? AK is fun. (laughs) <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Jason, what do you think, man? You AK or AR? One gun, running gun. I mean, <clears throat> to be honest with you, I can use anything, but yeah. I, I just prefer an AR platform. I mean, AKs are cool. It depends on which one you get, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like if you got like that Volk over there, I hear you, man. <laughs> that thing's a uh, yeah. monster. Or something from like Rifle Dynamics, right? Or like a Phoenix Fuller build. Like that's your skating on glass. Um, I look at AK as everybody knows my stance on it. Right. It's an amazing platform, yeah. of course. Yeah. But bro, I am not <laughs> trained on that platform. <laughs> it's so hard. I, cannot, I, I like shooting. Like it's fun to kind of like bring some steel yeah. here and sure. there. But if you're gonna give me a gun, just give me an AR, man. I know, but I that's can. the requirement. So they have AK PCC division, which like PSA has one, Distant Arms makes one, um, and I'll go into a fun story in a second. Yeah, yeah. Klashnikov, mm. um, and then they have what's called open division, so you can add uh, red dot optic, magnifier on yours. And I shoot open pretty much everything now. It's just it's more fun than iron sights. But um, they have like run and gun stages where you're doing jungle left, right, running through, and then you've got to shoot offhand at the very end when you're winded to shoot the steel targets. You know we shot out of a bus we shot up at a 200 yard mover last year at ak masters even with the pcc wow. so the flight time was so long before it actually hit the plate um but th- my favorite part about the ak stuff is reloading um it is not something i practice on the ak platform and so oh, where i lose the most time rock it a little bit yeah. <laughs> yeah where i lose the most time is like go in the mag yeah yes. mine is like i tried <laughs> like run and gun with an ak before and i just like did a reload you know how you sometimes Miss a reload, but it still kind of sits there, <laughs> but it's not. Yeah. I'm like, what's yeah. the magazine falls on you? You see, that's why I like 545 AKs, baby. <laughs> that's Dude, right. Dude, yeah, AK74, we have yeah. that. What, what brand is that? I don't know. We, Walk works. Yes. Yes. That, dude, it shoots. Smooth. Just. Smooth. I, I get more pleasure out of that one uh, than AR. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Like, it's that good. I mean, I run a cheater gun. I run a Galil. IWI Galil worked over by distant arms. The trigger is competition trigger. And I shoot 5.56. I ain't playing with 7.62. That's way too expensive. Yeah. (laughs) 
<laughs> five five six, right? Yeah. But a Khalil yeah. five five six oh, oh, shoots it's amazing. so good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I yeah. run cheater guns. We've learned that about me. I say cheater yeah. guns as like race ready guns. Well, I mean, is there any three hundred blackout caliber for competitions? Uh, mm, I, there it I, is. Maybe. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you could run it if you want to, but you're talking. I hear you, man. When Painful. I, I mean, <laughs> distance. Price, brother. Price yeah. is the main. Price, you're right. Yeah. You're right. I mean, you, you can, can get, do it. You can get 110 <laughs> barns and, you know, hit 300 for 350. So I got to share this, too. In three gun, there's uh, some matches run heavy division, and there are guys that come out there with their 308. The difference is, instead of on paper having to shoot two with, like, 556, five, they only have to shoot one 308 round. But, like, 308 round on, like, 60 targets sometimes, that's expensive. Wow. That is expensive. Imagine carrying all that yeah. ammo, too. Yes. Jesus. Heavy. And, and they have to shoot 40 or 45 caliber pistols, so they're in, like, they're in... Big, big 40 guys. i'm out <laughs> oh, I'm good. y'all can keep that so this is a, this is a 545 five right here love it i mean just a beauty man this thing <sighs> mikhail kalashnikov god bless mm-hmm. his soul mm-hmm. created this thing and still out there running strong man you know why else you guys yeah. would like the ak stuff is you can actually shoot suppressed in these matches. You can run suppressed all Oh, wait, all we're day. not supposed to shoot suppressed? In three gun. In uh, three gun. We're not? No. Supposed? Why not? Because it's timed. So if you, um, a lot of stages are going to like end with rifle, or even if you say you started with rifle, you have to have the shot timer to be able to pick up the time. But those are just the rules. Like USPSA multi-gun. Um, there used to be UML. There used to be three gun nation rules. There's a lot of rule sets for three gun, so it depends on like who runs what. But yeah, suppressors are not used uh, because we have to pick up the time. Mm. Versus... I haven't even gone into the world of long range, right? But precision rifle series. I know we haven't really talked about that. And it's so addictive to Have shoot Have you done something. that too? Yeah. That's what I was talking about. Last year, I competed as an amateur. Okay, okay. Got into it. Actually, right before I left to come see you guys at Classic, my barrel and action got fitted together and threaded and all that. It showed up like right before I had to leave. And I was like, oh, I'm ready to put my gun together. <laughs> yeah. You know, the suppressor is already out of jail. And so for PRS, um, the matches are, the stages have like 90 second timeouts or 120 second timeouts. Meaning it doesn't matter if you finish in 60 seconds or you take the full 90, you're not having to shoot with like a score on a time unless it's a tiebreaker stage, which I won't even, that's too much, right? Um, But anyways, in PRS, I love shooting suppressed. So I always shoot suppressors. A lot of guys run muzzle brakes. It's kind of up to you. But where I'm sharing this is like, you guys are into the tactical stuff. Like run a suppressor, run a suppressor on an AK. Like it's fun. Yeah, my buddy Amir does PRS. Um, Sandman goes pew. Shout out to you, Amir. And um, matter of fact, he's got, he runs that, uh, he runs a bolt gun and he's got a gas gun as well. The gas gun he uses is SP10, and that thing is just <laughs> oh. like mm-hmm. nasty. So you can, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, dude, that thing's a really. Nice I think Ryan's you know, bringing like, it to us over uh, here. I know. Uh, I don't know when this podcast is gonna be out, but that thing was is at CF contest. Yeah, it is. Nice. Yeah. Okay, man. Okay. So okay, uh, obviously suppressors. It's a lot of fun to shoot. Some it people is. argue it that hey, it makes you more accurate, or they There's, argue that it changes the accuracy. In a, in a better way. No, I mean, it's like either way. Sometimes it's, it improves and sometimes it doesn't. So like in NRL 22, if you actually add a, a 22 can onto those guns, they actually shoot a little bit less grouping than if I you see. Didn't. And so that's the only one I run a muzzle break instead mm. on. Gotcha. I've always heard suppress like, again, uh, no expert on this sure. when it comes to suppressors. I've always heard that suppressors make you more accurate, if not just the same as your flash eye. Right. It just depends. Like it doesn't make you less. That's depends. what I heard, yeah. but I don't know if that's true. Of then course. we're going into direct threads, mounts. It's kind of like a wormhole that yeah. you're you're asking for. What do you think, Jason? <laughs> so. uh, it it depends on platform to be honest with you. Yeah. Um especially you're talking about cold bore shot versus, you yeah. know, yeah. if the gun's warmed up or not. So gotcha. I mean, you do have some, you know, point of aim, point of impact shift. Obviously, every can company likes to claim that they have the most minimal. There is some. I mean, we're talking minute, give or take, in you know, 100 yards. But once you start spreading out over 100 yards, that's when you're going to get the real um, Test. jazz going yeah. on. So Yeah. Th- Ryan, this is your AK, right? That's well, that Volk, baby. This is Volk, right? That's the only suppressed AK we got in here. Okay. Yeah. So if you look at I mean, how cool is this thing? Uh, beyond like, cool. If, if you I could can run just, that amount. Yeah, I, I wish mean, it was 5 for 5 though. <laughs> It's uh, it's seven C by thirty nine. You're right. I wish it was. It would be even crazier, yeah, be right? Crazy. That is a complete legal setup to run an AK match. By the way, but suppressor, it. optic. It's badass. I'm not an AK person, but I would run the living crap out of this thing, yeah. man, all day long. We got a sur- Surefire RC two, yep. nice. And you've got the uh, optic mount on the side, so you're not actually reliant on the top of the the dust cover, you know, on the AK platform. So like mine has a rail on top on the Galil that every time I take it off, I just check zero. 
you know, to clean it and then come yeah. back on. You got to check zero. That's what nice, a, though. This is a nice setup, Ryan. This really is pretty much the nicest AK. So what we're saying is Ryan needs to go shoot an AK match. Yeah. Ryan should. Yeah. I think Ryan ran it. You, you and Matt. Match. Yeah, you and Matt. I ran like one stage. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we gotta get Did you run it with this thing? I go. see. There five four go, five. JC. So there you go. <laughs> Dude, we got those <laughs> You beat yeah, you beat Clint and I, I saw I saw that video, you showed it to me. But uh yeah, this is a fantastic loadout, man. That's wow. awesome. This it's is a lot of fun. Like, I mean, look, I'm telling look, you, if you go to these matches, you see some crazy AKs, you see all gold AKs, you see like tricked out Sarah right coded. Right all, yeah. all, all gold, you say. Yes. Zastava. 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 Or Zastava. Yeah. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. What is tomato, it? tomato. I thought it was Zastava. According to uh, Renko. Renko, Renko, Renko he, I mean, he's the guy. He owns it. <laughs> yeah. he owns Either way, those are say. beautiful guns. Yeah. They are. Oh, M70? <sighs> I want one. Maybe someday. <laughs> we'll see. But anyway, so moving on. So the weapon platforms. So since we're talking about that, pick one. And no, you can't just have it all. Would you pick, if you had to choose just one, a pistol, a shotgun, or a rifle, AK or AR? We, we've already been over this. 12-gauge shotgun. It'd be my Gen 12. That's it? Really? You I go love with shotguns. Wow. My shotgun's my favorite gun in the whole world, though. Like, I grew up with them. I love teaching, like, women how to shoot them because they're probably the hardest one that people, like, don't teach properly. And people get intimidated by them. They get afraid that they can't shoot them. And you get to blast stuff out of the air. Blast no stuff. No pun intended. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. true. So, Ugh, it's fun. All right. So, shotgun. Yeah. Fair enough. I mean, it's yep. amazing. What does Three Gun Kenzie use at home? For self-defense. Um, so I have guns all over my house in strategic places. Everybody, you heard it. Sorry, don't come break in, please, <laughs> um, or steal them. So I actually have this, like, cool bedside um, Velcro, like, thing from Crossbreed Holsters that sits between your mattress and then on the side. So I have a holstered pistol there with a backup mag on there. In the corner of my room, just if I was to get out of the bed, then I built a AR pistol, suppressed, um, EOTech, optic, magnifier. I'm probably never going to use a magnifier for self-defense, to be honest. Um, and then in my living room, like where I work, I have a Walther PDPF. Um, and then I carry every day on me. So sometimes I just have the gun on me in my house, but they're all over. So you just basically use a pistol at home. Not yeah. The reason I well, asked that. No, no, a shotgun. exactly. I don't use a shotgun because they're okay. just not, they're not going to be my choice of home defense, um, especially in terms of like round capacity in the size, right? So like pistols, you can get, I don't know, 17 rounds and then a shotgun maybe for the size a three or five, yeah. you know, and then rifle standard capacity. Yeah, the so. my, I mean, those are very valid points. For a home defense, uh, shotgun is a fantastic option. I'll never knock sure. them down. Uh, I but don't. moving with one. Yeah. Is, yeah. I, I don't use, that's not my preferred home defense gun. Uh, and, and shotguns, you know, the, the blast, the recoil, oh, yeah. it's just not as easy to operate as mm -hmm. an AR. 300 platform. blackout. 300 blackout. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Same here. Don't want to wake the neighbors. Yeah. Exactly. You want to be considerate. And I've got pistol people. suppressors, rifle suppressors. So, like, yeah, in my house, they're they're going to be suppressed because of that. I'm not going to lose my hearing at home. Mm. Exactly. Yeah. Well, since, I mean, we're jumping all over the place, this sure. is, which is yeah. amazing. Yeah. So let's jump into suppressors. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So. <laughs> Can I share that? something, too? Can, <laughs> like a year and a half it? ago, guys, I had zero. Take a guess how many I have now. <laughs> suppressors? 17. Close. Yeah. I was just going to say, like, five. 18. <laughs> You have 18 suppressors? I had zero a year and a half ago. I went, it's addiction, Who man. Who you know like, in ATF? Thank you, ATF. <laughs> Appreciate you. No, but it took a year and a half to get them all out of jail, but I did have four approved in batch in January, and then I just got one 16-day uh, approval. That was like the last one that I waited. And it's funny, when we talk about that PRS build, I got the can out of jail before I got my action in barrel. Mm. <laughs> well, I don't have any right now, what? and I'm looking at Ryan. What? What? None. I have no We tried to Sorry. talk him so into addiction. it, folks. <laughs> so I, I want to, but I, I mean, we, I'm trying to work with some companies over here. Yeah. But uh, we were going to do stuff with Huxworks, but maybe, maybe still will. We'll talk to them because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we use their stuff. Mm -hmm. But obviously, the thrash, Trash Panda from uh, <laughs> RQ. Uh, Amen. That's, that's, a, that's a good one, too. We'll see. Hey, listen, I've got my Sig Rattler LT. Yeah. That's my home defense gun. I cannot and will not use that thing. Well, I don't want to. Let's just yeah. say use that yeah. thing without a can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I got to get something. Do y'all ever build your own AR pistols or your own rifles, your yeah. AR-15s? Yeah. 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 But I, I, I grabbed that Rattler LT yeah. when yeah I had to. So it was really good. So uh, suppressors. So suppressors. Let's talk about <laughs> suppressors. Uh, <laughs> why? And I, uh, Jason, you let me know your, or let us know your thoughts. Mm. And Kenzie, same thing. 
why should you like we're gonna talk about pros only right now and then we'll go to cons because there's cons to everything right For sure why should you express your defensive rifle yeah. go ahead Okay, uh, so for number one, I don't want to lose my hearing protection. So, I, you know, that's the number one that's obvious for suppressors, whatever. But, you know, we talk about, you said Huxworks, but like the flow through technology now that a lot of suppressor companies are making. So you're not getting all that gas in the face. You're not also get lead poisoning. There's a lot there that has benefits. Um, but man, the, the, the silence inside of your house or the sound suppression is huge. Those are just my two off the top of the head. Okay, that's why you would cho- choose suppressor over not suppress gun. Yeah. Okay. Uh, number one, pinky out because it's a little bit more elevated. Um, <laughs> other than that, uh, signature reduction. Um, that's key thing. Um, sound is, is cool and all, but signature reduction. Um, when I think about it from a defensive point of view, I want to make sure that I'm making it the most non-fair fight I possibly can. Of course. There's no so such thing. So if as I can fight. stack yeah. five rounds in you um, without even, you know, my ears ringing, I'll yeah. do that very good, especially with three and a blackout subs. Like, we're talking, the gun does not move. That's yep. Okay? <laughs> There's like zero quiet. recoil. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it doesn't move, and yeah. I'm all about that. Uh, the, in a home defense situation, yeah. it's going to be quick, violent and quiet yep. and i like that you'll never see like, silent oh, night baby yeah. what's going on i'm, I'm getting shot yep. oh, oh god yep. <laughs> what um 300 blackout what size barrel so it, it depends so i've got a six uh and three quarter barrel i've also got a nine inch barrel okay. um wherever that you want to do i mean the reason why it was developed was it can be fired from a short barrel and still have maximum lethality for sure yeah, yeah. so um and you think about that like the rotation of one and five twist uh, i mean it we could go on and on yeah. for days on that, but um, it thrives right there in that subsonic realm with um, good, a good projectile, whether it be Hornady, whether it be you know Barnes. They've got that that great the X Hex stuff. That's cool, but yeah, um, two hundred eight grain, baby. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, think Hornady. about that. That's coming at you like a thousand feet per yeah. second, yeah. Or something like that. Yeah. So um, before I ever do a, any defensive gun in my house or like rely on it, right? Mm-hmm. I like to test out. But I just built a five inch three hundred blackout. Sure. Put a tie on um, seven six two QD suppressor on it, and it's super short, super accurate. I'm enjoying it. I, I, Close range. I'm not talking about accuracy mm-hmm. and distance, right? Mm-hmm. But I've just been testing and having fun, um, and it's running great. I put an adjustable gas block so I could tune it to the suppressor, good. and good. I'm excited. I hope it's my new, yeah, home defense. It's good. It, 300 good. blackout is, it's people, let, let's not perpetuate the myth that, like, you can't engage <laughs> with 300 blackout and doable distances, because yeah. I will tell you this right now. After we went to Q, we can hit 360 all day long That's with awesome. subs. Subs. What's the barrel length? Uh, six, seven, five, or so seven inch. Crazy. There so you go, guys. The there flight you go. time is crazy <laughs> because you can fire two shots and hear them go, ting, ting, and that's great. That's wonderful. It gives you a little bit of confidence booster. Cool. But yeah, um, you can. And three hundred blackout is a very versatile round. So let, let's really break that down, right? It's, yeah. I believe it's one of the most versatile rounds outside of like new eight point six black. Um, you have the capability of making it stupid quiet. And also, just with a mag change, we haven't changed the barrel, we haven't changed the bolt, we haven't changed anything. Throwing one ten supers, and you're engaging 300, 400 yards with primarily ease. Obviously, shooter, you know, discretion is advised. Yeah. It, it, your mileage may vary. That's up to your skill. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it's very you, it's one of the most versatile rounds. Period. Yeah, hands down. No, I'm. Uh, 100% agreed. Yeah. I actually was introduced to 300 Blackout here at Classic. Nice. Right? Yeah. I, I didn't know much about it at all before. Fell in love with that That's round. Yeah. If you shoot a 300 Blackout subsonic suppressed, mm-hmm. you just realize, oh my God. Like, you can't go back. It's a, it's very, very addicting. Even supers, man. Yeah. But, th- but yeah. it's addicting. And that's why I went and spent the money and got the Rattler LT, and now I'm working on this can and mm-hmm. everything. I'm going to SBR the gun and everything. It's in pistol configuration right now. But shooting that thing with subsonic rounds, yeah. still yeah. it's coming at you about 1,000 or so feet right. per second. Right. Yeah. And Stop really that. short barrel, mm-hmm. super compact gun. You can easily maneuver that around, mm-hmm. no problem. And capacity, I mean, you'll have... Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, and look at the velocity loss that you have. If you... Try to do it apples to apples, right? You got a six, seven, five inch barrel on a five, five, six. You got a six, seven, five inch barrel on the three hundred blackout. The amount of kinetic energy delivered to on target out of 
300 blackout is almost damn near two times the mo- as uh, the five, 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 five six, six from a six seven yeah. Four, yeah so like you know five five six depends it really needs barrel like 12, and velocity 12 and a half or something like that at for, least at a minimum yeah. right or, or like 11 10 three you can do it they, they prove that the mark 18 has stacked so many bodies right yeah um but the longer you give that barrel the longer dwell time the more time you actually have for that rotational energy to, to have effect on target you know that's where 556 five, really yeah. blends it in i mean the original m16s were how 20, long 20 inch barrels 20 inch dude, barrels yeah. right yeah, so, yeah that, that's yeah uh, so and yeah, that so thing is over three thousand feet per second, right? Fifty-five fifth grain. Right. But we uh, have gone into some weeds, y'all. Yeah. I know. So I like if someone it. wants this, I like <laughs> it. Full yeah. breakdown. <laughs> I like it. But suppressed, I, I, I there's so many con- uh, positives, right? Yeah. Uh, pros. Yeah. Uh, you know, cons, and we can just quickly go over them. It's just, of course, you can uh, get a lot of back pressure. You dirty up your gun if you don't maintain it you can get wham the con that i wanted to mention not a pro con but um if people don't know how to put like an adjustable gas block on it or if their guns malfunctioning because they don't have the right ammunition paired with suppressor so like one of the guns that i've been i love that i've been playing with is the new carmel from iwi and it has just uh, an adjustable piston so you can go to suppress to regular um so i yeah i put a silencer co on there and and got it tuned up it's nice it shoots pretty good yeah so just that's the kind of you gotta you gotta work with exactly you gotta tune it up to don't just trust a gun too don't just go buy the gun buy the ammo put the suppressor on and be like yeah this can be my home defense like dude you don't know if that ammo runs through that you don't know if it's going to be reliable you don't know if it's even going to jam or malfunction so that's really frustrating even carry guns like i'm really passionate about this it's like people like yeah i just carry it out of the box from the store i'm like no i shoot like a thousand rounds before i trust a firearm period yeah you you want to know that uh, that's not even if it's a glock right yeah be a fluke like you go oh i've had trigger pins walk on a brand new glock out of the box i was like shoot yeah you know don't most guns come with like a 300 round break in period no. anyway. They, there is a, some yeah. like people people gen, they generally recommend but they don't like they people don't. just grab and just That's shoot right away yeah. I like hear I've, you, man. Yeah. I've had a Glock a, 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 a Glock 17 that would just like same ammo it just uh, it, the round would always stuck it they get stuck on the feed yeah ramp. yeah and guess what yeah. we found out that feed ramp on that barrel was not really polished it was just still yeah. Yeah. like it lacked some QC yep. mm. so with the hollow point nose it just gets stuck yeah. exactly we're talking about manufacturing yeah. and yeah so i'm very passionate about some of that stuff and when i teach it's like people are so like their eyes open when i speak about that and then same thing with ballpoint ammo versus hollow point ammunition not every gun likes every hollow point there's so many different bullet profiles at the feeding ramps or whatever or ejection port yeah there's a lot there no i i 100 agree that's in the weeds too yeah <laughs> it is i mean hey this is how it is we're talking right <laughs> no uh the suppressors like i love uh you're right signature reduction right yeah. mm-hmm. and with suppressors when you fire the, the animal or when i say animal like for hunting they won't know where the round is coming yeah, from. They correct. can't For tell, sure. right? Yeah. So with hunting, if if you can't tell, go ahead. I hunt uh, suppressed Unless too. you have a yeah. surefire RC3 with a, <laughs> with a huge Warp flash off. profile. Oh, then was, everybody knows <laughs> where Video. it came from. Yeah. <laughs> that thing has a pretty huge flash profile, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. Oh, God. They did a whole, like, what was it, Instagram reel on that? It's kind of wild. So what's going to happen now, surefire? I mean, are they fixing it? Just don't use a war comp. Yeah. You're good with a yeah. you know flash hider. Okay. Or direct threat, whatever. Yeah. All right. Hmm? Close time. Oh yeah, closed yeah. closed time specifically. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So it just it has a catch. Basically. So what I know we're say? in the world of like defensive stuff too, but uh, something that I like preach about with suppressors too is it's the least intimidating way to get a new shooter to shoot like a long gun. I was going to get there. One of the pros. Sorry. One yeah. of the, no, no, you're, yeah. you're good. That was one of my pros. Because that's really not defensive, but it is something where, like, when I, I host an annual women's event called Gals Day at the Range, and I actually dedicate a whole bay to suppress fire. Um, and so, like, they can go there and shoot, you know, 1022 with a suppressor. So, yeah, 1022 is not going to move, but now it's also quiet, so they're not as, like, jumpy or, like, a little bit nervous around the sound of, of that yeah. whole bay. You know, and pistols, same thing. Like, I just, I love suppress fire for teaching people and then taking that recoil out of a lot of the firearms. Like, I say this, Jason, you and I both have shot indoors yep. on a stack. Yep. When somebody fires, it's happened a lot, like especially on 11 and a half. Mm-hmm. You, you, make, you make entry, your body yep. goes right, you go left, you're engaging target. Sometimes you turn, you're side by side, you're number, three and, uh, two, number two and number three side by side, you're engaging the same target. That concussion is insane. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If anybody, if you've never experienced <gasps> this, guys, 
indoors shooting a five five six through a just a flash hider. Sucks. It sucks. Absolutely sucks. Yep. You can't hear. And then multiply yeah. that by how many guys are in the room. Everybody's <laughs> yep. shooting exactly. Yep. Yeah. So you, if you're at home and you yeah. grab your gun and it's not suppressed, right, and you, boom, you engage, that's very concussive. Uh, you may not be able to hear the secondary attacker if there is one because you just concussed yourself. Yep. Your ears are ringing. Yeah. You can't really communicate with uh, your loved ones if you need to. Yeah. It, there's a lot of... A lot of uh, like we, we used to say this, like when we were uh, 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 police officers. If you let me turn the radio down so I can see better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like, no, like when you were growing up as a teenager, that was yeah. actually the role for me. It was like, you can't concentrate on two things of driving and listening. <laughs> yes. So we would just be out there Here looking I for am a texting burglar. And driving. <laughs> yeah. Shit. Yep. So we were like driving, yeah. looking for, I don't know, like a, some, some guy or some yeah. suspicious person, right? Yeah. And the radio is up, you're listening to some metal, whatever. You really got to turn it, <laughs> turn that thing down so you can see better, right? Yeah. Because you have this sensory overload yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. in your ear. So same thing. If you're engaging, bang, 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 three, five, five, six rounds, just three rounds, that sensory overload that goes into your ears and your brain has to process that. Yeah. And that actually prevents you in a way processing certain things because it's just so concussive and loud and your ears are ringing. Yeah. So suppressor right there takes that thing out of the way yeah. for you, out of the picture. So that's that's huge for me. If you're hunting, you got dogs with you, your mm -hmm. companionship with your hunting dog, mm -hmm. you're going to hurt the dog's ears too. Yeah. So suppress. there's so many uh, pros. Uh, the cons obviously would be a little bit heavy. Sure. You got to pay $200 to ATF. <laughs> <laughs> Blood money. I hear Blood you. Money. Again, yeah. 18 suppressors in a year and a half. So that's they, how much money is that? Uh, two, three. I, I don't know. It's man. gross. <laughs> like 30, 36, maybe 100. Yeah, yeah. That's gross. Mm. That's why we it's are so strong. <laughs> we're, we're, we have the $800 billion budget, <laughs> defense <laughs> yeah. budget. But uh, anyways. Yeah. So anyways, so with that being said, I, have you guys ever heard any case of a self-defense shoot with a suppressor? Yes. Have you? Yeah, my buddy, Steve. Oh, he, he The one that didn't get his gun taken away. Mm. Oh, the one that you were telling me. Yeah. Okay, I see. The guy that ran, mm. he was gone. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because yeah. you know what I'm thinking? I've been in court a lot uh, for work. Prosecutors, dude, they love, they love making noise. So if you have a fully automatic gun or, I, I'm just thinking out loud right now, suppress gun is like, what are you this is a war zone sure. or what? Yeah. Why didn't you use yeah. a shotgun? Yeah, yeah. it is. No, yeah. yeah. Um, the intent is. They, yeah. they say that. Yeah. They try to use that against you. Yeah. Oh, you use a suppressor? Like, well, what are you, an assassin? For okay. sure. Sure. Yeah. Yes. No, I, I'm with you. Yes. Uh, dude, I think there was a case in Florida. It's uh, always I, Florida. I, I think James Reese uh, was talking about this. Like, guy used a hollow point. He had hollow point in his pistol. He had a defensive shooting. And, and the defense attorney said hollow points are deadlier. Therefore, you intend to kill the guy. Look at what people go through in Jersey, bro. Yeah. What, what happened? That, okay, there's a guy who works for Garda. Okay, armed car service was driving through Jersey, and he was arrested on the way home while carrying his duty gun. Because, guess what? You guessed it. He had hollow points. Jesus. And he's issued them from the company. Wait, he's yeah. duty gun. Duty gun. Issued. Glock 17. Issued rounds. Was he in his personal car? No, uh, in his personal car, driving home from work. Okay, I want to know the laws on that one, like what his policies were. But <laughs> no, no, that's like ridiculous. Jersey doesn't allow hollow points. Oh, Jersey doesn't allow no. hollow points. What about police officers? Uh, apparently, whether in your security realm or whatever, it don't matter. Yeah, that's so stupid. It's so like, stupid. You know, it's just like. I don't under okay, you know what? So they I would rather full metal jacket sail through their house, their neighbor's house, the wall, and yep. potentially yep. hit Fido, but yep. you know, hollow point, oh God. You know. I hear you. They don't, Choose the they don't state understand. I, I just want to say this as a person who has seen a lot of people shot because it was part of my job. Full metal jacket uh, will kill you just as good as a hollow point will. Mm -hmm. The only difference is with the FMJ, you will live slightly longer till like you will finish the job if you're trying yeah. to kill somebody, you'll die later. So hollow point isn't necessarily going to kill you. Uh, how do I say? Kill you more. <laughs> Let's just say this, right? It'll stop you faster. Yeah. But you will still like if I shoot you right through, shoot a person. Let's just say through their heart with an FMJ. It'll go right through. They'll flinch. They'll still fight, and maybe they'll kill me, and then they'll die. Yeah. But with a hollow point, when I shoot them, it'll. To deliver that kinetic energy, it'll open up through the heart, it'll stay there, 
will drop them most likely and they'll still die. This time, the only difference is I saved my life or somebody else sure. around me. So with both are fatal shots, one of them will just kill you slower. Yeah. Oh. yeah. So I don't think they, whoever made this law, they don't know anything about ballistics. Oh, most what? Thermal ballistics. Anybody mean, making laws. You mean people making laws actually know how stuff works? Yeah, no. What? They didn't? They don't? <laughs> This is news to me. Because, you know, the, the brace <laughs> We're in turns it into a, a fully podcast. automatic. <laughs> right? Like, brace? Bro, yeah. Brace? We, let's not go there. <laughs> okay, this, this was the best argument that I saw when it comes to this whole brace thing. I forgot that judge. The judge said, that, so ATF goes and says, hey, you know what, Your Honor? With stocks or this thing, they, they're more accurate. You know, they, they stabilize it, so therefore they're able to deliver more accurate shots. So we can't have that. The judge is like, wait a minute. If they're more accurate, why would you not want that? That's safer for people around, and that's safer for them if they're defending themselves. Oh. That makes perfect sense, so they should have it. But ATF's argument was, well, they would be more accurate against us. us. Of course, of course. How steep is that? Do as I say, not I as I do. I can't get into politics because it's uh, just a weird. Oh, I can get into politics. Down, yeah, no. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway, let's just move on from that. Uh, the hollow point and all that. Yeah. You guys know. If you guys want to know my true thoughts, <laughs> every Wednesday, 7 p.m. Eastern, I live stream for Classic, and I talk about whatever I want. And it's generally politics. <laughs> it's good stuff. Trust me. <laughs> all right. Moving on. Three Gun Kenzie. All right, so you are obviously sponsored by many companies out there. You do some stuff. What is ahead of you now? now what are your aspirations? What's coming up? Yeah, um, I guess I'll drop some news-ish on here. What? Some news-ish. Um, no, like I have been, I mentioned it kind of earlier, is I've been hosting this annual women's event. It's something that I just wanted to do, and I started in Florida when I lived there for two years, brought it up to Tennessee, and it's just a one-day event for women to come out to the range, and I brought all my personal guns. Um, when I, you know, getting started, the very first one had like, I don't know, five people. The next one had 15, and someone brought their mom and their friend and their wife, and I'm like, yay! Um, and now, like, as of this morning, I think I have 82 people registered for this year's event, and I can cap it at like 100. So my aspirations is to do these all over the country and do them like regionally. So that's easier for people to come to because my event brings in people from like eight different surrounding states. We're in the talks of bringing one to Texas, hopefully. So I'll be doing some firearms instruction there. Um, is it your company then? Yeah. So like this is not something with, um, you know, well-armed women or girl in a gun. I know there's a lot of organizations that do that kind of thing. I mean, I know even like gun owners of America have done that. I, I'm loving seeing these events happen, right? But yeah, this is something that I just like event planning and I, I guess I like to do this. Um, it takes me a long time to organize all this stuff, yeah. um, but it's amazing. So yeah, that's coming up on my horizon. And then this year um, I've got, like I said, AK Masters Clash Bash coming up like real soon. Um, I'm still doing NRA event, and so all these like media events is coming up. I'm going to Five Seven Fest at Gun Talk Media, which I'm excited about. Five Seven Fest. Yeah, on May seventh. I 7th. think they shoot Five Seven. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> yeah on May seventh. That on 7th. May seventh. <laughs> Think about it. That makes. I mean, sense. it was just three twenty day the other day, <laughs> right. yesterday. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Um, and then I'm still shooting. Like I said, um, Battle for the South is coming up in two weeks from we're, we're recording this podcast, and then we'll have Fall Brawl three gun as well. So, and then like I said, my PRS gun is sitting at home, ready to be dropped in the chassis. Get the trigger tech trigger on there, and so as soon as I put that that gun together, I got to go sign up for my PRS matches. So, I'll probably be home two weekends out of this year, maybe. You know, but what do you? Okay, this is not. That's not your full time job. It's just a more like <laughs> hobby, passion, and you obviously it's like have sponsors. Have these. Yeah, yeah. Because sponsors right. help me out, or um, their media events for clients, or whatever. So yeah, full time. I don't really have a full time job. I own a marketing firm. Okay. Radical Up. Radical Up. Radical marketing. Up. Yeah. Okay. And then Radical Up Podcast has over 120 episodes um, streaming on all the podcast platforms. So that's something that I wanted to do for a very long time. I wanted to have a co-host. You know, you guys like vibe together and get to do this. And it's so yeah. fun. It is hard doing it solo, bringing the energy and, and you, you know, bounce I mean? off. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I've been doing that. And then I'm also a writer in the firearms industry. Like I, I write for Wideners, Crossbreed Holsters, Athlon Outdoors. Uh, I've been in print magazines, but a lot of digital now. So I do that. And then, yeah, firearms instructor for private stuff, really, because I don't have the time to do, like, the permit classes now. I'm never home. But gotcha. I think that's everything. So you do <laughs> a crap ton of different things. Yeah. A Jill of all trades. Yeah. yeah. And it sounds like they're all 
your passion. Oh, it's it's a it's You're very a, lucky. Live in the dream. We started the podcast. Live in the dream. Live in the dream. And go. the thing about life too that I, I like to tell people is like it it, it wasn't easy to get here. It, it was a ton of sacrifice. Like I've been on a couch before, homeless. You know, getting started at a friend's house. Um, but also like this all could disappear tomorrow. You know. Yeah, all just, you just got to have fun with it. Yeah. So, okay, uh, this I mean, amazing story that you've, just like anybody else, you've done your sacrifices mm -hmm. and uh, you've come where, you, where you're at and you're going to continue sacrificing to go yeah. to even bigger and better places, and you will, I'm sure. Uh, you're a female, and, and this is a male-dominated <laughs> industry, sure. and, and, and I see more females out there, which is really good. Yeah. Have you had any issues what were we going to say, Jason? Oh, nothing. Something just came in the room, and I tried <laughs> not to not give fair. it. Nope, nope, nope. Hey, don't run. Don't run. That's don't gone. run. They're gone. It's gone. They're, what, they're, what do they bring in? I think so that's the... The Canic TTI Combat. Jackson, can you tell them to bring it back? April, coming out in April. Mine was delivered to my FFL, and I'm here. <laughs> Did you buy it or just like was sent to you? No, that's for, I'm doing a, a review, so stay tuned. I'll be oh, doing my own review. Oh, you get to keep it? Yeah. Can I say it on this podcast? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I work with. Okay, we well shut canics. this podcast down because I don't like this that I don't have one. <laughs> Fine, I, don't I want love one. working with with like and actually like I bought my two first SFXs way back when. Um, I was I did a review on the Rival and then I I actually bought the Rival S because I wanted to have it when it came out, man. And then yeah, the TTI they're they're handing me to do a review and write okay. it up and do some videos. I'm excited. Cool. Yeah. Okay. All right. So what were we uh, talking about? Oh, no, we were talking dominated. about. So you yeah. Were, yeah exactly. I thought you were you were distracted by the gun. He was. <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah, this is a male dominated industry. Obviously, it, we see more and more women coming into the space, mm -hmm. which is really good because of folks like you. Right. Uh, and you've been doing this for 10 years now. Yeah. It's a 10 year anniversary. Yeah. Have you had any challenges for being a woman? Absolutely. Uh, uh, what are some of the uh, some of those challenges were and. How did you overcome them? Absolutely. You know, and, and again, I started in my 20s too, which are not a lot of people can afford to do that. So the credibility was the hardest part. Um, there are a lot of females, as we know, we don't have to go down that rabbit hole, that don't know anything about firearms. They don't know anything about maybe anything other than one or two pistols. They don't shoot any other platforms. They've never competed. You know, they can't talk the lingo and they don't actually know what we're talking about. And so one of the things that I did pretty early on, I'm trying to remember what year, but I actually went and I took an AR-15 armorers course. I know ARs are easy to build now, right? But like I, I had help with my friend Scott um, on that white rifle that you guys have seen in some video content we've done already. He helped me build that. Like he basically built it. Let's be real. But I got to pick out the parts and like kind of like Just watched the way uh, Jason built the uh, honey badger. Oh, no, I actually built that thing. Yeah. Pick, pulled the parts and everything. See? Yeah. That's fine. I'm just... I just want to make sure that you built it. Oh, just do okay. It. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I built it. okay. Yeah. But so that was one of the things I did is is like overcoming. Like, okay, if I actually know what I'm talking about, know how to build my own guns, know how to work on them. Like, that's pretty impressive. There's not many females that are on Friday night. I'm at home changing muzzle devices, doing muzzle attachments with suppressors, changing triggers out. Like all the time, right? Mm -hmm. I had a the side of the ambi safety shear off from a bucket dump. I was like, all right, I gotta take the trigger out, gotta change out the safety. But anyways, so that was one of the things I did in the credibility world. And then, you know, it took one company. It always takes somebody to say yes. So when I was on um, Upwork.com, which is like a freelancing platform years ago, maybe five or six years ago, um, I put on there like I'm passionate about firearms. I have a master's degree uh, in marketing. I know how to write, obviously. I know how to do communications. And so one company, which was Widener's, said, we want you to try to write a blog for us. Like, let's start there. I still write for that company today. Mm. They gave me my shot. They gave me the property to shoot on that we shoot videos and I get to train on. Um, and then going into like Athlon Outdoors met me at SHOT Show. Um, and someone's like, hey, you need to talk to that girl. Like, I know she writes, but we need to get her on a bigger platform. Now I'm like one of, I think only two female writers for them, two or three, like there's not many. But the credibility has built because, okay, she's published in this, you know, she's doing these reviews. And then someone read one of my reviews recently, like, wow, you went into a ton of detail about like the trigger snob in you and like why this doesn't have this controls and how to adjust, again, going to the Carmel, like the, the regular versus suppress. I'm like, oh, I play with everything. I try to break it. Yeah. I take it apart. Like I'm not an engineer like Jason because his mind is brilliant, but I want it. I want to be. I try to be, right? Like that's, that's fun yeah. when you get a gun to play mm -hmm. with it and take it apart. It is. Especially, uh, like, just going in to see, like, everybody QCs their own stuff. But, like, how <laughs> anal are you on certain things, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, yeah. I, me, I clean my guns after every thousand rounds. 
awesome. I like a deep clean. Yeah. Now, lubing is a different story. You should lube any time that you have a chance. Yeah. Um, he did that this morning. And I actually watched him do yeah, that. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> he was like, sitting I have right a here. problem in this room where I'll, I'll spaz out, bro, because I'm just like, why is this show dry, chonky, so dry. and you can hear it? I'm just like, oh my god. Yeah. yeah you you, you got to you know, do that. Taryn was like that too. Taryn yeah. Butler. He was like, why is this dry? Yeah. yeah. He right. Would just yeah. say that. Yeah. yeah. And it it just it when you shoot so much, you don't want to ruin the platform for yourself yeah. because then you become biased. Yeah. yeah. And it's, unless it's a Steyr pistol, which those suck. Okay. Yeah. Tell me how they, you really they feel. They Seriously, suck. They just oh my God. That thing sucks. It's absolutely atrocious. Sights. Ugh. I haven't played with one. But yeah. Triangle. Like but rear sights are like this and front sights. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, you have to line much. them up somehow. Ha have, yeah. fun, have fun, Ian, with that gun. Um, <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. But Jason's right. Like, so, so knowing your gun inside out, doing your own QC check on it. Um, so all, I think it's in the firearms industry. I've, I've ran into so many no's. Um, I was recently, I'm, I'm not going to name any of these like kind of things, but last year, he kind of heavy stuff. Um, I applied to be on a, a show. And I was told, no, I have great person. I was in an email. It was beautiful. Like you have a great personality. We'd love to have you on. You don't have enough followers on Instagram for us to put you on a platform. We want people with a hundred thousand followers that can, you know, draw people to our stuff. I love how people, this, this always, whole followers things. Always. I've seen. And there are people listen, that can't shoot. Like I'll talk about, like I've seen accounts that have million, two million followers, some known, some actor or some whatever, mm -hmm. some shooter. And they get like a picture. It gets like three, 4,000 likes. 50, 60 comments, and then an account that has 100,000 followers gets, gets like 20,000 yeah. likes. Yeah. So, so, like, I, that's another thing. Like, uh, gone are the days of, like, Instagram and, like, you getting a hella follower account. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. It's yeah. about yeah. reach now. It's, the, it's, it's engagement. the reach. It's, it's engagement, engagement and reach. Man. Yeah. So, you know, you can make a video or it's a reel that's nine seconds long and it gets shared 370 times. That's That's – Decent, mm -hmm. you know that's what I'm saying? Like, that, exactly, I agree that's decent. That. So, like, yeah. who cares about followers? Because at the end of the day, followers don't equal it. dollars. Doesn't matter. <laughs> so, and it's a paradigm. Yeah. So, but that was one of like the roadblocks. Like, ran into mm -hmm. that. Um, I applied to to do. But some. do you think that? I apologize no. for cutting you. Do you think that was legitimately that, or was that? Oh no, I was told that. No, I was told that. Oh, wow. No, no, they chose other women to be on the show, but they were all, for lack of a better word, gun bunnies. They were people but, that. Go ahead. I told, but I do want to interject here. And I, that's a unfortunate. That's true, Of though. course, that's, that's unfortunate. Yeah. I, I was just actually more focused on the whole female aspect. Like, yeah. men are being chosen over females. Right. Like, the, the, the challenges a female mm -hmm. faces against other men. For sure. Not necessarily other gun bunnies. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that happens every day because they're always yeah. going to be like, okay, dudes know more. Or the other thing is, maybe this is rare, but more dudes want to watch dudes' videos than a female telling them something. Like, I, I don't know. We're gonna see how that audience plays wanna, out, right? Like, they don't want to hear uh, from you, like maybe. Uh, to learn. I don't know yet. I, I personally, like uh, when I was testing. listening to you yesterday, I, I was like, I, I to be would honest with you, like women are better teachers. So yeah, um, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. I was like listening to you yesterday. You're like, hey, we do this. I was like, oh, I was taking notes, like legitimately. <laughs> so, hey, but, but I ran into that. I ran if into you're, that. If you're closed yeah. off like this, then you don't know shit. Yeah. Okay. You yeah. think you do, but you don't. Yeah. Okay. Anybody who who's actually really top tier in their game. They're generally very open to learning. For sure. So it doesn't matter from this. who. Quit looking at this, Jason. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, yeah. <laughs> Thank but, uh, you, John. Oh, gosh. All right. right so what do we got here? Boom, boom, boom. So what we have here is that mechanic. <laughs> this is a comp. Now we're talking about combat. competition. Yeah. yeah. There yeah. we go. So this would be able to be run in the open division. I think we talked about this all, um, offline. But so this has a compensator built in. You've got a magwell already on the gun. Depending on what sport you're shooting, the compensator wouldn't be legal in certain divisions, um, and then neither would the magwell, unless you're going to go shoot open division, like yeah. for USPSA, for, for different matches. But, yeah, this would be a solid gun for three gun, out of the box, ready to go, just fun. You know, amount of red dot optic. I don't know Kaya's deal, man, but, like, he's just, like, suffering in the iron sights world. Like, you... I don't... I... Tr <laughs> like, listen, there's a thing called suffering. I enjoy the living crap out of lighting those things up. I love it. it to me, there's something in my mind. But then you got to have a sight pusher on site to change the sight if it's not, you know, in alignment versus red dot. You just, you know, take a flathead screwdriver, a penny, I promise you, a back I will of go, a piece of brass. I, I swear, <laughs> and I will, I will literally go against you with iron sights with uh, versus your okay, dot. Okay. Like, I, not, I'm not saying no, oh, I will it. destroy you. I'm <laughs> yeah. not saying. I just have let's to see, have yeah. my gun. Yeah, yeah. Right? yeah. Like, give me you. one of those lock with the Trichicon uh, suppressed right sights. Yeah. I do. Pretty darn yeah. good with them, right? Yeah. Up to 50 yards, I can do some uh, good run and gun and sure. kind of stuff. I love them. I'm not, by the way, negating 
the superiority of red yeah. dot. Yeah. Red dots are definitely superior to iron sights. They're easier it's to teach on too because 100%. whenever like I get any students in my classes, they can't explain what's happening with the iron sights, but they can explain, oh, the dot went left, the dot went down, the dot went like you can, okay, we're jerking the trigger, we're anticipating yeah. the recoil. So it's a good training tool. Even with dry fire, you can actually get that immediate feedback. Irons are harder to read and harder to explain to someone. They're definitely to harder because you got to line yeah. things up and hold them steady. But also if you move the front sight, they don't know where it went sometimes. Did it go left? Did it go right? It disappeared. Yeah. Right. They don't have You got to, yeah. that's where the shot placement, yeah. right? So. <laughs> Yeah. But so, what do we got there? Uh, so you got. Looks oh, like he's busy guys. with something. No, you guys. No. I know there's a lot of um, stuff in the box too because it comes with a hard case here. But can I typically? I don't. Again, I haven't been able I to like play with color. mine yet. Color is amazing. But you got ambi controls, ambi slide stop. You've got you know your fiber optics already on here and adjustable sights. But the uh, you know. Canic typically includes all the optic plates. They're probably in there. So that way you don't have to go wait for an aftermarket plate, right? Like they include yeah. it in the box, which I love. And then typically they'll have different size mag release buttons too. So like more flush fit, longer. You got the back straps. I'm sure there's more in there. So yeah. I'm sure class is going to do a whole breakdown on them. Yeah. That is yeah. pretty cool. I like it. Yeah. yeah. I saw, I actually interviewed Taryn at Chacho. If you guys haven't seen that Chacho coverage, definitely check it out. So pretty. The man and himself. And the coin should be in there. Yeah, it's in there. The coin's in there. Yeah. So you get a little there, challenge coin. I got a couple of those. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This I'm, Kenick's got to grow on me. I just, I don't know, man. Yeah. I'm just. See, not all of them feel this. Like, this feels really good. But some yeah. of those, like, old, like, the SFX rivals are amazing, yeah. right? Yeah. But the, I don't know, like the Mete's or some old ones, yeah. I, I just, the OG they're not for me, SFX's. man. The OG SFX's. They're not for me. I know even the Rival S that I have out here, like I always adjust or change mine with the lock grips, you know, aggressive texture, mild texture. It's kind of setting up the gun to you. That's one of the things in any shooting sport is like you've got to be able to reach a trigger, feel good in the hand with the grip. So the after, trigger's nice. Oh, yeah. So they the put trigger. the SFX yeah. Rival trigger yeah. in yeah. this one. I think what? you're going to stick with that because it's kind of a competition. I wish they would have made it steel frame. You know what? I asked. <laughs> I asked. I asked. We talked about that. I know where that's going. In our video. Hopefully. I think, I think what's his name? Neil? Neil? Nils. Yeah. Nils, 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 Nils was like, we actually, never mind. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I think should, he, yeah. he didn't care to have one, right? No, he no, did. He did? He preferred. Oh. I don't yeah. Do you know I his history of like winning everything, man? No. With plastic guns? I can't remember the, the, the record that he did, but he went and shot like two gun nationals and won that. He won limited or like production nationals. And then he won... I think it was limited. So this dude like shoots iron sights all over the country, shooting like the polymer version of the Canic, beating guys with 2011s, you know, six thousand dollar guns. And I just love that he just comes in and wrecks them. And then iron sights, he can beat people with red dot sights all day in his sleep. It's just it's he's one of my favorite people in the industry, favorite shooters to watch. It's just it's fun. Yeah, I mean I've never met him, but Taryn said that he's, he's uh, pretty much the best shooter out there. Yeah, that's he, what Taryn said. Sure. Mm. For sure, yeah. Uh, so speaking of Taryn Butler, <laughs> all right. So have you? You, you know, right? You work, yeah. you've done, you've you shot for him before or you Not shoot his guns? Yeah. Like, so I have the TTI Benelli M2, which is what I started with TAC Ops, uh, the shotgun. And yeah, yeah it, it's beautiful stippling job and, you know, the port's open. So it's, it's a race ready gun because Taryn, that's what he makes. Um, you know, I know that I've got their Stinger, which I've gotten to shoot, which is their PCC. Sand Viper, super nice. I like, I like red dots. I know you're the I Pit know. Viper guy. I, yeah. But I like red yeah. dots. I think they're superior. For I sure. love them. It's just that I haven't fully transitioned yeah. yet. And then, like, I mean, he did the collab with Genesis Arms. So, full disclosure, like, I shoot for Genesis Arms. Um, that they built my three-gun shotgun. But they've got the breaching shotgun. they got the new Hux can on it. But he collaborated with Taryn on the John Wick 4 movie. So, mm -hmm. man, those shotguns are fun. Have you been up to uh, TTI? Not yet. One day, I know it's on it, my bucket it, list. How could you be three gun Kenzie California and not is shoot so there? Horrible and so far. I know, I know, I know. I don't understand. I know. Like you, one day, <laughs> you got to. <laughs> I know. I feel like it's one of those things. Like what do they say, Cl Ryan? The Clint Smith. That's like the rite of passage for all special ops guys. Yeah. Sure. I feel like if you're a gun, if you're a shooter, It'll especially happen. a competition shooter, yeah. TTI is is a rite of passage. You got to yeah. shoot at least one time there. Yeah, it's, it's such it's a good coming. place. Uh, we'll hopefully go back there again for another collaboration. When that's going to happen, we don't know. We talked yeah. to Taryn about that, but we did most recently uh, at Pit Viper. At, we featured it at cfcontest.com. So I don't know when this is going to be uh, out, guys, but check out cfcontest.com. Most likely you'll see something amazing there. <laughs> Promise you. Pro tip. Something, yeah, pro tip. <laughs> pro exactly. Tip. <laughs> All right. So, uh, so since you've, you've not shot there, but I'm sure someday yeah. you will. Tell me about your uh, role models in the competition world. Who are they? Oof. 
so it sounds silly. It was never like about the greatest shooters. It was about the kindest shooters to me. It was the ones that were willing to mentor me. So like mm-hmm. the role models, like first and foremost, um, he's like famous or anything, but Scott Newnham is one of the best open shooters in the country. He's the one that helped me build my rifle. He's the one that's ha- helped me through the engineering stuff that I don't understand. Um, <laughs> so many questions, right? So like the really the important, important thing in any shooting sport of role models is finding someone that's going to help you through it. That's answering your questions that has been there and can save you time. Right. So like I went, um, Joel Turner jr. Who shoots for the AMU still, he was actually one of those guys. That's just the best. He's one of the best shooters in the world. So I got to take a class with him. Me and my buddies so <laughs> actually did a three gun class and he's the one that changed up with the Benelli. I was doing weak hand loading. He's like, Hey, try strong hand loading. You're gonna be faster, safer, and it'll be a lot less heavy to, to do. So that was a role model I had for sure that I got to go take a class from. Uh, Travis Tomasi was another one got to take a class from him. He's a national and a world title, you know, champion in shooting sports, you know, meeting Nils, JJ Rikaza, uh, Shane Coley, any of like these great names, right. was just kind of like, Oh my God, gosh, it's real. Jesse Harrison, the goat of all female shooters, you know, in the world, um, you know, meeting her, she's such a sweetheart and she's so nice. So it's, it's also rewarding too, because I, um, I came from this weird, but like a surfing background. Cause I was from lower Alabama, not much surf there, but I used to go to surf competitions and I would meet my role models and they'd be not very kind. Right. When you say role, I like the best shooters. It was surfing stuff, surfing like, right? Stuff, it's like, yeah. oh, the pro shooter, like, didn't make time for you, didn't want to sign anything, didn't want to take a picture with you. There were there were tons that did, but it's funny going over to the firearms world, there's those, too. Like, you look up at these people uh, and you meet them, and you're like, oh. You know, I got to I got to not just meet Jerry McLook, but I got to shoot with him. Like, we shot, um, gosh, USPSA Nationals or Area 6 National Championship for three gun, like, years ago, like, when I was uh, first getting started. So that was kind of fun. So just all of those now, it's weird thinking about it. I'm sure you guys have the same thing as, like, Oh yeah, I see him at this event. Oh yeah, you know I know him. It's like well, look, earlier on in our careers, we'd be like, "What?" <laughs> a little yeah. bit, a little bit. In I, any, I, I. Oh, you're just chill. Jason's I'm just, too cool. I'm, Jason's I'm, too cool. Never I'm mind. Chill, bro. Never like, mind. I, like, <laughs> I, I've always been this type of person Whatever. where, like, no, like, there's great people. There's people who are, who are really proficient and prolific at yeah. what they do, right? Like. Uh, Oh, I have another one. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. to me, nobody's higher than God. So, yeah, <laughs> you know, sure. Sure. You know it, it's just like I, I, I acknowledge the people do something really awesome and I give them their space to do that and I congratulate them. But like, hey, man, you know, like we're, we're going to we can kick it just like anybody. You else. never fangirled fanboy? No, nah, not really. I don't fanboy so, anybody. No. A little. I, I, I never have. have. I did a smidge. Uh, I got to shoot with and well, Arnold, with Arnold, Jack Carr. Bit. Okay, see? But I got to shoot with Jack Carr last year and film with him, and um, I've read all of his books. There's not a lot of females, too, that, like, enjoy his books. Like, they are gory yeah. and bloody. Yeah, they're uh, awesome. They're amazing. Yeah. So I've read everything. Like, right when the new book would come out, I would buy it. And I even bought a signed copy of his book, like, before I met him, right? So what's so funny is when we went out there, he like, oh, do you want me to sign one and shoot one for you? And I'm like, oh, I already have one, but I'll take that. Yeah. Because yeah. it's custom to me now. Yeah. yeah. yeah he, cool. He's this generation's Tom, Tom Clancy. For sure. For yeah. sure. Yeah. yeah. No, that's right. that's pretty cool. Like role model. I mean, I yeah. uh, for me like or a fanboy like Arnold. I've always liked them yeah. because he's got a really cool story. But overall, I, I don't really think anybody's above me or below me. Sure. I kind of like do my. They're own just thing. people. Yeah. They're just people. 100%. But it's exciting to see what I'm um, always impressed by is someone that worked really hard at it, that trained, that practiced, that made it, that put the sacrifice. Like, I know what those people did, so I respect them so hardcore for that. Not their fame, but it's like, you did the damn thing. Yeah, humbleness is very, very important. Like, I'm in the uh, tactical world, let's just say, and you see some of those guys, like some sick-ass operators, even law enforcement, some really good cops Mm -hmm. or uh, operators or detectives, whoever. If they don't have this humble, cool personality, I don't give a shit about them. Yeah. I yeah. don't care. I don't care if you're a SEAL Team 6 Delta. Yeah. If you're just a douche, then you're a it douche. It happens. It happens I, a I, lot. If yeah. you, that's that's how I look at it. So to me, like that, your personality, your humbleness, your kindness uh, is what matters. Like Jim Foreman, yeah. SEAL Team 6 Command Chief, Master, Master Chief, is a good friend of mine. I love that guy so much because he's an incredibly humble, awesome, awesome dude. He would be actually one of my role models. There you go. Car- remember what they say, character will keep you where talent and skill can't. Exactly. That is very well said, man. There very well go. said. Yeah. So, yeah, um, that's that's pretty good. And mm-hmm. uh, so you got some role models there. But I'm going to ask you this. There's a couple more questions that I definitely want to ask. But <laughs> before I go to the bigger one, who do you think right now in 2024 is the is the best shooter in the world overall? Come on. I think John Wydell. Have what? Ever, have you ever heard the name? No. I think Nils Jonathan and John Wydell. John Wydell 
is making okay he's a he's with amu now but the kid's like maybe 2021 20, sorry john i don't remember your name her age um but he grew up shooting three gun and like joel turner jr used to always win everything overall with amu and now like they go back and forth but like john's not beatable so like the, the one of the best shooters in the country in like percentage of shooting him is like 60 percent, and that's good mm-hmm. that's really good because of how how beast mode this dude what's is. his name John Rydell. So you think he's, he's the AMU best team. shooter in the world? I think Nils Jonasson is also Wait, close. Wait, what about Taron Butler? He's not shooting and proving that he's still the best, right? Like, I'm but just telling you. I'm just telling you. Nils know, is shooting. Hold on. Nils just shot Superstition Mountain 3-Gun. He's shooting USPSA matches. He's shooting um, IDPA. He's shooting IPSC. So I'm just sharing. In 2024, you asked me a question. Yeah, 2024. Yeah, because I'm going to ask you this question. <laughs> Taryn Butler is a nine-time grandmaster. There's no other person in the world that's a nine-time grandmaster. Um, I think, actually, Justine or Jay, Justine Williams might be. Like, she's a GM Taren in all of these USPSA. Unless it's happened in the last it three might. months. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Taren I don't know. said that he was the only n- nine-time grandmaster. And I will be fair that to be counted, you must still compete. Correct. Like, that's so, that's yes. the whole thing no, that I yeah, – you said 2024, and I don't know. But, like, Jerry Micklick is, is not the best anymore when uh, – you know, like he's not aged out, but like he's still freaking amazing. But there are guys now that has set the tone. They grew up. These junior shooters, when I say junior uh. shooters under 18, that grow up in this sport, they have no fear. They don't think anything's hard, right? Like us adults, we overcomplicate things. And like we also have life, whereas kids, like they're not worried about jobs and, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, they're, yeah. So John, Nils, Nils. There's, there's other ones. But, but like when Nils can shoot, like – Without practicing, he could pick up three guns and go shoot a three gun and then just go win it. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's got that natural talent, yeah. you know. Yeah. Pretty good. Okay. Just saying. Just saying. What do you think? Uh, I mean, you're not in the competition world. Do you? No. Yeah, you don't know the I mean, I, I would like to get into it. I just want to shoot pistol stuff. Competition. It's same here. Because to me, that, like I said, that performance aspect plays a huge role into a combat situation. Oh, yeah, you get to know your gun, run your gun. You get to really know your gun. You get to see that, you know, calling your shots, having that – Going with that sight picture one, sight mm-hmm. picture two, yeah, and, and, and and really honing in on the skill that you already, you know, have obtained if you're working at that yeah. type of operational level. Yeah, the so. only, uh, like, absolutely knowing your gun, you get to be really familiar with that gun, how yeah. to use it, draw your sight picture, sight mm-hmm. alignment, if you don't yeah. use, yeah. obviously, iron sights. All of that, it'll just hone in your skills like crazy. The only difference is, obviously, on a competition uh, stage is there you just memorize it you run through memorization sure. combat yeah. is obviously a little slower because you have to react to whatever the heck right. is in front of you right? right but still using that equipment that's going to make you so familiar with your gun yeah. mm-hmm. i would love to do that too man i actually especially after yesterday uh just one time we did it mm-hmm. and i was all live on camera i would have loved to <laughs> done that numerous times yeah. but hopefully sometime yeah. soon yeah but you asked the loaded question too. I just got to preface that. Like, there's so many other good shooters, right? Are we talking yeah. about, and these people I'm thinking about, like, they can pick up any three guns and perform, right? So, like, that's why I think that they're the best because they're all well, they're well rounded shooters. Yeah. But there are, I don't even know about the Olympic team that shoot, you know, trap and skeet. There's amazing shooters there. And then we talk about pistol sided stuff. Um, you know, there are specific people there. So I could go into it all day. Yeah. But they're, I'm that's, sure, you that's know, they're, loaded. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I'm sure there's some names <laughs> like, we don't. The rifle shooters, yeah. I'll say, like, a lot of the people on the TTI team, for sure, like Marco Cabahug, Zach Smith, AJ Anthony just schooled everybody, um, Kyle Litzy. I mean, oh, my God, these dudes yeah. can shoot. Look at the lady from Beretta. She's, like, a three or four time. The Olympic lady. Yeah, what was she, her Olymp- name? I forgot oh. her name. Yeah, I forgot her name, too. She, she would, like, her just giving us those pointers, right. like. She was good. What I'm saying is like Very you ask good. a loaded question, but <clears throat> and I don't live in their world of trap and skeet yet. I'm just I'm not meant, using as an example. I, I, yeah, you're right. That's PRS though, like so. I'll, I'll just oh, do a blank statement too. Is um, Cole Harmon won last year's uh, PRS series, but I think the AMU, the Army Marksman shoot- shooters, turn out the best shooters in the world in the country. They've got um, people that shoot USPSA, three gun, IDPA, whatever, and I'm not joking. Like. They beat everybody. Doesn't matter what shooting yeah. sport it is. That is what they're they do yeah. Monday through Friday, eight to five. They're Who training. They? They're shooting the Army, Army marksmanship, marksmanship unit. That the Air Force one is pretty good too. Those Air Force yeah. guys are PRS sure. long range everything. They so shoot everything. PRS call one. I think <clears throat> I'm saying his name correctly. Sorry. Um, like John Waddell, Joel Turner, uh, John Browning's in there. Uh, Nate's. I never say his last name right. Anyways, but AMU churns out the best in any shooting huh. sport, and they've got teams for all of them, and they dominate, man dominate that's, so i'm just saying that's pretty cool but that's I mean, our job that's you're our right job. there's uh so many different shooting <laughs> disciplines, styles yeah. disciplines for <laughs> sure yeah. i guess i meant those uh your good old yeah. usbsa like open yeah that type of uh, shooting uh, christian sailor is the best shooter in the world in open 
period with pistol. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Christian, Christian Saylor. Yeah. He's like 22, 23. <laughs> I see. Phenomenal shooter. Just won yes. the world champion, won the opens men team with them, like national title. Yeah. He doesn't lose. Gotcha. Yeah. All right, Jason, <laughs> we got to go after him. Good <laughs> luck. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> if, we st- if we start now, we could. Maybe in like in 20 10 years, years. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> a decade. Maybe. But yeah, look at these shoes. We got to wait till he's <laughs> old and shaky, Parkinson's and everything. No, no, no. You, know, you know what you got to do because he's in his 20s? Wait till he finds a girlfriend. Cut. Oh. <laughs> no, go ahead. Oh. I was I, just saying, wait till these guys find a girlfriend, they get distracted, and then you move in. There you go. <laughs> That's oh, why we always joke about like when junior shooters go to college or like when the 20 year olds like finally found females. <laughs> and they're you just keep, like, they discover they're there's texting open, and shooting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> that could be a sport. <laughs> Texting and shooting. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Um, Good question, though. Question. Yeah, there was a billboard <laughs> that says, you know, texting and driving kills for more driving tips <laughs> text <laughs> whatever but you know what's crazy have you ever thought about that yeah like i love to see billboards where they have all this text meanwhile you're driving and, and you're reading, reading this i agree with you I agree. you're going i agree what an oxymoron <laughs> yeah it's crazy all right you had more it's questions so funny. i have uh this question okay so female in a man's world, I guess not anymore. I believe right now that's we're uh, it's growing, man. It's growing, it's and, dominant. Which is and every sh- every fire manufacturer is really focusing on females. Like you look at the the team, like Beretta, they've added some more shooters. Glock's added three new shooters, and one of them's my girl Morgan, who has been a world champion. She's going to dominate. She's like 16 right now. Okay, I'm digressing. But I'm just saying, yes, no, females are growing. It's growing, yep. and shooting sport is so good. You yep. don't like you don't have to have female divisions, I guess. I mean, we do, but I know you do, yeah, but you don't you really don't have, have to, correct? Because Correct. It's a three pound trigger, right? Two pound trigger and you just run and gun, right? I mean, I feel um, like there's some differences, I think, a little like bit. I know what? people hate that when they say, well, on body physique for men and women, if you're doing um, like shooting like three minute stages, like I'm saying, on all three platforms and having to carry like I couldn't even lift the 50 cal yesterday. Right. So there is things that not all equal, but I do agree. Like, if you well, train, like you IDPA practice. type stuff. I mean, come on. Oh, right? yeah. Equal, you're equal, equal. equal aside, I agree. Right? Agreed. OK. Um, what would you. So there's people probably watching this. I mean, there's men most likely watching uh, and don't know the, the competition shooting like me and Jason. And of course, there's some females probably listening sure. to this and they're pretty intimidated. How, what advice would you give them to not be intimidated actually and what should they do to get in? What are some of the advice uh, that you would have for them? You're going to hate and love this probably. The number one thing I tell people, you got to start. You got to sign up for a match. I don't care if you're not prepared. I don't care if you're going to overanalyze it or you're intimidated. If you set a date and you pick a match and you say, I'm going to go to this, I'm going to go to a local, you know, whatever, steel challenge or local USPSA match. All right, sign up for it, right? How would they find out to sign up? Okay, good question. Yes. So practicescore.com is where you go to look for matches. There's also matches listed on USPSA.org. Still challenges. Oh, gosh. Still challenge association.org, I think. Uh, Google, right? Google this. But all of these websites and practice score specifically is where you would register has the list of matches. You can search three gun, you could search AK and you could see what's nearby. Like it has the whole map of the United mm-hmm. States. So that's a good question. Um, and then I've said this in, in other videos with classic is like run what you have. You do not need to go out and buy thousands of dollars worth of guns and gear because what if you hate it? What if you go shoot this match and you absolutely hate it? So borrow what you can is my advice. Um, ask questions you know when you show up to the match or tell the match director when you show up hey i'm new i i don't even know where to start what are the range commands like ask questions that you don't even know what questions ask right like hey just just let them know you need help um borrow stuff if you need to and then yeah just run what you have if you got a stock any type of stock pistol a couple magazines and mag pouches and hey i even use pockets as mag pouches getting started But the intimidation stuff, like that's hard to get through, right? Is honestly, is just shooting it and just starting. A lot of that goes away. What people don't realize is like nobody shooting the match cares about what other people are shooting. They only are self-critical of themselves. They only care about their score. They don't, they don't care about what you're doing. So like, it's hard to take that out of your mind in a competitive world, right? But like, just leave that at the door. And do not go in with a high ego or high expectations of performance is the other thing is like, it's gonna be tough you're not going to be the best shooter and you're going to be humbled very quickly if you're going in with like, Oh, I, I'm going to crush this. Right. It's just a different game, different world. Okay. Which, which, um, what would you, which class or style would you recommend 
novice people to start the steel challenge uh, is what what i was telling you and i would say 22 and here's why if you shoot any of the 22 divisions you could shoot a 22 pistol you could shoot the little 22 rifles and you would start what's called the low ready position so when you go up to a stage you know you load your magazine you know get the the gun hot and you're pointed down at this like cone and it's low ready and then at the beep you get to shoot just five plates of steel so very simple low round count you know not complicated to Mm -hmm. to think about um, and the reason I say that is because in Steel Challenge, you can shoot 9 mil, you can shoot center fire, and you could have your pistol. Um, but for those divisions, you have to draw from a holster. So now you need to go get a holster, you need to have mag pouches, and, and you have to learn to how to be able to, to draw. Yes. And so for Steel Challenge, you start with your hands um, above your shoulders, and then you reach down to, to draw and shoot. And so that's where, if you've never done that, please don't start there, right? So Steel Challenge, 22 division, and I think everybody has a 22 at home. That's what you start with. Just about. Yeah. And they're, they're relatively cheap. Gotcha. Yeah. No, that is a good question. That is really, really good. Jason, you got anything else to add? <clears throat> what means more to you? Success or significance? Significance. Yeah. Wow. I just want to make an impact on the world. I just, I want someone else. You asked me that question earlier. I want the newest female or the newest, I don't know, junior shooter to be able to look at me and, and, not see what I accomplished, but see that there is a path to do what you want to do in this industry. It doesn't matter that it's male dominated. If you want to be a writer, if you want to be a shooter, if you want to produce video content, be an editor, the path is there. There's no gender stuff there. You got to fight through it. But I want them to be like, if Kenzie can do it, because it's been rough, <laughs> Kenzie can do it. So can I, right? So gotcha. that's, that's a big thing that I just want to leave that impact that it's possible. There you go. Very well, Matt. Kenzie, I could talk to you for hours about this <laughs> stuff, fun. and we could go into <laughs> the weeds, the weeds three hundred blackout, yeah, <laughs> that a lot was of fun. things. But uh, definitely don't want to take much of your yeah. time. But really, thanks for coming over here. We're very happy to have you here on the team, and looking forward to see what some of the stuff that you'll be doing on your podcast and some of the other uh, aspirations that you have with the whole Kalash Bash and other <laughs> stuff. Thanks. So I look forward to uh, seeing that. So. Thanks a lot. Thanks for stopping by, Thanks guys. Good. Definitely uh, check out Kenzie Three Gun Kenzie. Uh, well, well, what's your how do, how do people find you? That was find perfect. You? ThreeGunKenzie.com, at Three Gun Kenzie on Instagram and Facebook, uh, Reticle Up Podcast on all the streaming platforms, YouTube, Reticle Up, all that good stuff. Very easy. Find that me. is that is fantastic. <laughs> and don't forget to check out CFContest.com. I know I mentioned that mm. there's some good stuff happening there. Some great stuff, especially really? with you know maybe something right. in the room. Great stuff. Oh, <laughs> maybe. much much greater. <laughs> They're already on divs. Much. Uh, uh, I mean, I don't know. What is this? Uh, no. Oh no, much, it might. Much 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 no. much, much <laughs> yeah. greater. Oh no. Yeah. But thanks, guys. Thanks for having yeah. me. Excited to Abs- come back soon. Absolutely. Thanks for coming in, guys. Thanks for tuning in, and uh, we appreciate your business. And we'll God. see you on the next one. God bless. Yes. God bless. <laughs>